because I have, as you see here, obviously I have some hardware and some software. And I figured out how to modify this to use it to capture this energy beam that comes out of my eyes. And the reason this is paranormal is because it's just not allowed by science. So what makes something paranormal is not that it doesn't exist, it's that it's not allowed by science. So basically 200 years ago, taking an x-ray, you know, sending invisible rays through your body so you could take a photograph of a bone would have been paranormal, would have been impossible, would have been scoffed at. Actually, in the early 19th century, many professors of engineering said that heavier than air flying machines were impossible. We have a long history of things being quotes, outside science, impossible. And then when you figure out the physics that's involved and how to capture it, and then you can develop technology and then it just becomes part of science. So that's what this process is here. I figured out what this energy is and how to capture it. Basically, once you've figured that out, you can start using it for all kinds of different applications. Because if I can make a tone come out of a speaker, then I can make a light come on, I can make an engine start, I can make a computer screen turn on, I can make an alarm for a paraplegic sound in the morning. A paraplegic who wakes up in the morning can look at the sensor and the lights in the room will come on. There's just absolutely no end to the possible applications. And how long ago did you did you determine that you could do this or that this was well, possible? The first time I tried to capture this energy was actually 1977, I guess it was. It was just before I went into medical school in Canada. And I was th I was already thinking about this. And I didn't know what kind of energy it was, so I thought it might just be regular photons like the light that comes out of the flashlight. So I borrowed a photomultiplier from a professor and uh, went in a dark room and tried to look in the photomultiplier and see if I could capture photons that were coming out of my eyes, but it didn't work. So I've been thinking about this for 30 plus years. And only in the last couple of years I've kind of put it all together. Uh, this is how I can capture this energy. Make it work. Just a little bit cumbersome here. You know, it may not actually work. The first time I might have to make a couple of adjustments, but once I get it adjusted, it What, what kind of software do you have to use? Uh, that's another part of the details I'm not going into right at the moment. So the finger doesn't have anything to do with it, it's just showing you when I'm going to make it happen. So that's basically how it works. I could just keep going like that indefinitely, basically, until my eyes got tired, probably. Does it put strain on your eyes to do this? You just have to stay focused and concentrated. I've never tried to keep going for 10 minutes. I'm not sure what would happen. But basically, as you can see, I can let you know with a finger signal when I'm going to make it happen. And then I just bump the energy up and there it goes. Exactly how I do that is you know, it's part of the technology.